The best kind of doors are the doors you have to explain. All right. Welcome, welcome to Unhinged with the Door Door. Today, we do have a very special guest, Mr. Alan Lilly. Ready, all set. This is also from my trip to Eugene. We did a little weekend getaway. So this one is actually at a concert hall. So keep that in mind. Oh, no. Very good. All right. The concert hall. So we've got it. We've got an assembly. I've got a capacity of hopefully several hundred if it's a concert hall. Otherwise, Concert. Yeah, no, it was it was at least three or four hundred, maybe five hundred capacity. So there is there is precisely one time that I can think of in the twenty some odd years I've been doing this where I found this to be an acceptable answer, and it was because they led to a stairwell at a, at a, at a mall, and so you're on the second floor of the mall, and it led to a stairwell, and then down at the bottom of the stairwell that dumped out onto the street, the street was being torn up, you know, like all like all the sidewalk was gone. There's a big drop off outside, so the higher half would have been trying to get out of that stairwell once you got into it. But we covered the exit signs and we put signs up that said the actual exit is over here. Mm. We directed traffic away from it. Not just said, hey, here's an exit. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so I see Von Duprin Concealed Vertical Rod. I see a really odd application of Nero Style. This is the 33 or the 35 series. Concealed Vertical Rod always makes me happy. The, the rods don't get damaged. They don't get bent. They don't get hit with carts. They tend to, they tend to last a little bit longer. So kudos on the single motion egress. Kudos on the, I would like to see a mullion in here. I don't know. I forget who it was. There was one of the manufacturers many moons ago did a, did a study and they, they took a, a double opening like this, right? You get two people and they timed how long it took people to get out. And then they put a mullion in it. And basically what they discovered is that people aim for the center of the opening. So when both doors open, despite the fact that it's a six foot opening, people will still single file this. So if you put a mullion in the middle, instead of one six foot opening, you've got two three foot openings and you've got a much faster method of egress. So I would like to see a mullion. Hmm. Yeah, of no, course, I've, I've heard that that study also i i think i heard it through through foundation training or i don't i don't remember where but so, someone did a study and more people exit in a timely manner when a mullion is set in place even though you would think it'd be counterproductive because yep. they're like, blocking the way but in reality it just makes people go into two lines <laughs> yeah exactly right it forces the two lines we we as a we as a people we aim for the center of whatever we're whatever we want right so yes it's a six foot six foot wide opening but it's actually only it actually needs to be three feet because you're only going to get a single line, maybe a double line of people through, but probably not. Whereas with a mullion in the middle, you will absolutely get two lines of people and it will absolutely go faster. So that's why I would like to see a mullion, but that's not the end of the world. Is that a nightstand and the carpet in front of the exit? It's a piano it, it's bench. A, it's a piano mm -hmm. bench. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a piano bench okay. <laughs> and some carpet. Yeah. So, and so so we're just we're just pulling out like a straight up Dick Van Dyke show and we're gonna like make people go this way and then make them trip over a piece of furniture and hopefully they do a little spin and flip and keep walking out and don't get trampled in the meantime. Do we know why it's no exit on the other side? I have no idea why they would not it, this led outside. I didn't go to that side of the building. Maybe they were doing construction or something out there, but from, from this point of view, it's it's an exit, but it's not an exit. This is so, not a door. This is not a door. If they if 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 the high, if the higher hazard was on the outside of this wall, right on the outside of this building for some reason, that construction, whatever it is, I would expect the exit sign to be covered up, and I'd expect like a lot of signage, like a really big sign across the store that says "Go this way instead." And, so, and I actually don't even know what it would take to make that acceptable because it's an assembly hall, and there's so many people that potentially could need egress. I guess you just have to make sure you had enough openings to be compliant elsewhere in the respectable area, right? Well, a, a smart builder will take the number of required openings and the distance between the required openings, etc. And they'll add a safety fact or such an occasion, right? So smart, if, I'm, smart if, I'm building a, if I'm building a building and, you know, I have to have a, I have to have a door or you know, I'm building a concert hall and I have to have a door every X number of, X number of dozen feet or whatever, X, you know, every hundred feet per round number. I'm going to put a door every you know, 80 feet and it's going to cost me three more doors in the building, but it means that I can close one and still be compliant. Do they all do that? No. Would I do that? Yes, but you know, that's you're, you're smart. That's you're a smart builder. <laughs> <laughs> But no, not everyone thinks like you, Alan. Actually, I would say you are a rare breed. Yeah, it's it's one of those like those those basic code compliance issues, right? Well, well the, the the code says that we have to have nine doors. We have nine doors. Yes, but if we put eleven doors in, then when something has to close for construction for whatever, we can still be compliant. We have a little bit more flexibility. And what's an extra uh, what's an extra two doors on the budget line over the cost doesn't exist. Yeah. So that's yeah. If there was a legitimate reason to have those, and um, you'd have to be pretty convincing. That's the thing. I'd like to, I would want to see the exit sign blocked. I would want to see the big sign that says go this way. 
not just no exit, right? Okay, so I can't leave here. So then what? What do I do? Because I'm expecting to throw a little throw a little bit of panic in there because you know, panic at the disco and all of a sudden I have to get out. And then then what? Right. And that's how, you know, that's how we end up, you know, it's, we end up with lessons learned from like I don't want to say the oh, what was the club in Chicago? The Paul I, I know, Clemento, yeah. Clemento, whatever it was. I, I, that, yeah, that, the that, one where the the exit signs were like you couldn't see them, right? They you were couldn't covered. See them, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So you end up with kind of the opposite problem of that of like people getting to a door they can't get out they still don't know what to do they still don't know where to go uh, like the doors that's... worked properly like they were they were there just people couldn't find them people right like, find them, right yeah. so exactly exactly the same exactly the same kind of you know kind of conceptual problem so the hardware itself right the actual setup sure but let's not put stuff in front of it of course and then like, let's cover it up if it actually needs to be I, and and then the fact that the no exit is less visible than the exit also leads me to think that this is probably probably just a we would prefer if you don't go out this door i yeah. would rather see emergency exit only please use front door sign right that might be that might be a more that might be more appropriate signage for this you know exit no <laughs> or maybe like some some large man named biff just standing there saying i strongly encourage you to use a different door right maybe that's <laughs> maybe that's the solution um, that, no. that would be a better solution than this right <laughs> One door is mainly not blocked here. So really, aren't you getting the same people out, the same number of people out the door? Ooh. Except for that. <laughs> Except for that, you're, you're, you're theoretically right. <laughs> theoretically speaking. In that case, there'll just be a pile of bodies on that side. So then you can go out the other side, right? And then Listen, it's a clear make... indication of don't use that door. <laughs> Don't, don't make your issues my issues. That's a them problem, not a me problem. But also, Benji, you know me. In an emergency, I'm I'm going out that door. Actually, I'm probably looking out that door anyway. Even not in an them. And I would I would absolutely an open that door and just just to find out. <laughs> it doesn't say like... alarm will sound. It sounds like we're investigating. Yeah, no, there's no like electrified system set up here. So yeah, why not? Why not? Actually, people were entering one of these doors not too far away so it's like on a, a wall of doors so i it makes me think they just don't want people exiting out this entrance even though all the other ones had no exit on it as well do you and think something is going wrong with the latches like the top and bottom bolt in the side that has the bench in front of it and they need it serviced and so they don't want people messing with this particular door i'll wager it's not that deep okay it's, why is the bench hey, not in front so of both put... doors so I can just, yeah, I can just put stuff, in, I can just put stuff here because, because I'm going to put it down because people just put things down, right? I'm just going to put this down here. It's not actually a door, so it doesn't matter because it says no exit on it. It's probably something stupid like this is where the band unloads and they tend to idle the, the they tend to idle their trunk there while they're unloading. And so if we have the door open, it lets exhaust in and then it sets off the smoke detectors, right? Like it's something, it's, it's probably something as stupid as that. And that's why they put no exit on it. Yeah. Um, or if there is an issue with these doors and they're not latched properly, so they want to keep them latched. And so if someone exits and then it doesn't latch properly, then someone could gain ex access to it potentially. I don't know. There's there's a lot that could be happening here. And and Eugene does there there is a lot of roaming population, homeless population around in that area as well. This is downtown Eugene. So potentially you could have people pulling on doors trying to look for, you know, a, a warm place to sleep. So okay. So if it is, I mean if it's a hardware issue, fix it and then make this go away. But I just like yeah. Yeah. Much better ways to do this. I think it's just a convenient sink. Like we we just don't want you to go out this door, but were any of the other doors that you could see marked like this? Yeah, all of them had no exit on it. All of them. Yes, on this whole wall. There's probably actually there there's two other sets of the same setup that said no exit. Hmm. That's slightly more terrifying. Because that did a lot. <laughs> And this is this was like just outside of like the main way that you go up into the concert hall. So people would be running down these stairs and going out, hopefully these doors and yeah, or they go out the other side of the entrance. But we know, Alan, uh, I mean, we all know that we prefer like naturally we want to go out the door that we came in unless we can't and yep. we'll look for another exit. Right. Yep. Yeah. No bueno. OK, no bueno. if you were to yep. give it a knocking score, what do you think? Oh, this is six. Six. It looks it looks good and it, it, it theoretically functions well, but there's there's the the, the human factor to this one it gives me a six. Yeah. yeah. I, go ahead, Mia. I was gonna. I am in like the six seven range because it looks like it's good, so it's just move some stuff out, retrain. You know me. I feel like the, I say that every episode now. There's retraining that needs to happen. <laughs> <laughs> People need to know about doors. Yeah. 
looks like it should be an easy solution. I'm I'm with you. I don't think it's too knocking bad. I think in the case of emergency, people would find a way out of this building. I don't think there's, it's not like it's locked or anything like that. Yeah, there's a piano bench in the way that people might trip over if they're panicking. You know, that's, that's just a souvenir to an opportunistic person. Like it's, it's right <laughs> by the door stage. You just pick it up and take it with you. <laughs> take, take, it, take it with you. So not, not, not too knocking bad as far as we can tell. So I'm with you. Probably a six or a seven there. Yep. I like it. All right. Well, Alan, I think this final door, if the first one really bothered you, this final door will probably, I'm sorry that. <sighs> If you want to be featured on a future episode of Unhinged, or if you have some pictures to submit, you can leave us a note below, or you can email me at mia at doorhardwarenerds.com.